What's up guys and welcome back. I'm back here at Gettle Toyota of Punta Gorda, Florida with this brand new 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander. Now, if you think it's just a puffed up Highlander, well, think again, it's a brand new model. And today I'm gonna take you on a complete tour and a detailed review of this vehicle. We're gonna start right up front and see what powers up this thing, walk around this vehicle, talk about its features. And at the end of this video, yes, we're gonna go for a spin together. So if that's something that interests you, go ahead, check out the rest of my channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And now let's get back to this. Well, Toyota's been busy over the last few years. They've been introducing a whole bunch of new and redesigned vehicles. And this one, I think, has been one of the most anticipated one of them all. That's because of the segment that it competes in the midsize family three-row SUV. And it definitely checks a lot of boxes to make it a perfect choice for families that need that extra roominess without going for the large SUVs. Now let's start at the design and the front here. So let's take a look. A nice long hood, a little bit of raised in the middle right over here. And then it ends right here with this beautiful grill. I actually like this grill a lot, this gloss black grill. You have the big Toyota logo, chrome trim piece, and the these lights right here kind of look like the RAV4 lights, but of course bigger. Now this is a fully LED light setup. Check this out. You have the daytime running lights slash turn signals. You have the fog lights right at the bottom. Now the bottom portion of this vehicle, it has this more of a gunpowder metal finish right at the bottom with some of the matte black plastic. There's three different power plants that are available for 2024 Grand Highlander with the base one, Toyota says probably is going to take about 75% of its sales. So let's take a look and see what it is. Underneath the hood, you'll find the same engine as on the current generation Highlander, which is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine producing 265 horsepower and 310 foot pounds of torque. Now it's really impressive. It's got the combined gas mileage without being a hybrid of 24, which is really nice. It is made it to an eight speed automatic transmission and it comes as a front wheel drive or all wheel drive vehicle. Hate the prop stick on the side, but we're not gonna dwell on it. It does have some nice sound insulation underneath here. By the way, zero to 60 on this vehicle is about seven and a half seconds. Well, as the name implies, this is a Grand Highlander, which is a large Highlander, uh, but it is not the same vehicle. As you can look at this design of this vehicle, it doesn't have any of these crazy lines that you'll find on the regular Highlander. It is also six and a half inches longer. The total length of this vehicle is 201.6 inches long, which is just shy of the brand new Honda Pilot, but it is bigger than the Palisade and the Telluride and about the same length as the brand new Mazda CX-90. Uh, it is also taller and it is wider. The width of this vehicle, 78.3 inches, makes this one of the roomiest vehicles in its class. And that's what was the uh, idea behind this vehicle, is to fit it in between the Highlander and the Sequoia, which surprisingly, this one has lots more room as far as the cargo and the third row seat than the brand new Sequoia. Now let's take a look at the design. I already mentioned that I like this flat hood, looks really, really good. 20 inch comes standard on the limited model, 255 by 55 is the size of the tires. I would probably upgrade these rims to something else, but that's very subjective. Now we do have this matte black cladding around the wheel wells as well as the entire vehicle all around has this matte black cladding. 
The mirror is the same color as the rest of this vehicle with the turn signal built in here, blind spot assist, and it is a heated mirror. As far as the windows, the top of the windows and the pillars are all blacked out. At the bottom of it, you have this chrome trim piece. You have the polished aluminum low profile roof rails and the vehicle is equipped with the smart entry system so you can unlock it or lock it from any of the four doors as long as you have the key somewhere on you. Now it is large, it also seems like it has tons of room inside. Well let's start with the back. I like the design in the back, it is more polished than the regular Highlander. Let's start right on top, so you have this huge gate spoiler with this big third brake light exposed wiper right here. Now as far as the taillights, mostly LED, that's hit the turn signal right here, but the reverse light here is actually an incandescent light bulb on the inside. You have the Toyota logo, Grand Highlander, it's all spelled out, limited, no visible exhaust, and the same color trim piece as we've seen in the front is in the back as well. You do have the reflector lights here, and it does have a power tailgate. So let's pop this open and let's see how much room we have as far as the cargo space. And the gate opens nice and tall. Let's see what we have here. Two buttons, one's to close it, one's to close it and lock it. You also have a little explanation of how you can operate this gate by waving your foot underneath here. But check out this cargo space right here. This is 21 cubic feet of cargo space, which is probably the best in its class. Tons of room. Toyota says you can fit seven carry-on suitcases behind the third row seat. But if that wasn't enough, you can of course fold down the third row seats right here and drop them. Let's see if we can do that. There you go. One and two. Um, and I kind of wish that there was an ability to uh, fold down the second row seats from here somewhere kind of levers or that would definitely be very very helpful now if you fold down the third row seat you'll have a 58 cubic feet of cargo space and if you fold down all seats you'll have 98 cubic feet of cargo space this is a lot larger than the current generation sequoia let's see if there's anything else that we have here and there you go have a little bit more of a cargo space, more of a hiding compartment underneath here. You also have a cargo cover that you can put behind the second row seat. And you have the Grand Highlander on this nice polished aluminum trim right here that's going to prevent this from scratching. Tons of cargo room. Let's see about passengers. Well, the seats in the back are nice and comfortable. I also have plenty of room here. Now, this front seat is adjusted to my regular seating position. I'm six feet tall. I am not touching. I probably have about an inch and a half maybe or so as far as my knee room probably about two inches above my head and this vehicle is equipped with this panoramic sunroof and there's no shortage of uh, shoulder room here as well. Now this seat is adjustable so you can move it back and forth. Now this is at the very back position which I would probably have to move it just about to here to get comfortable in the back. So before I show you the rest of this interior let's check out the roominess in the third row seat. And how do you get in the third row seat? That's actually fairly easy. There's a lever right at the bottom of the seat. You pull it, this seat moves forward, gets out of the way, and then you can get in the third row seat. Now I'm six feet tall. Let's see if I can lock the seat in the furthest most position in the back here. And I can, but I'll be touching my knees to the back of the seat. Now, if you're in a shorter than me, then you can probably fit just fine. But if you're an oversized adult, it's probably gonna be very tight squeeze. Is it a vehicle that I would wanna take on the cross country road trip? Nope, but if I give myself about an inch or so more room to leave enough for the middle row passenger, that's actually a lot more comfortable than many other midsize SUVs, which is again, a huge shout out for Toyota for actually making an adult friendly seat. You also have your own climate control, which feels so good just about now. You have your USB type C chargers and cup holders on both sides. Let me show you the rest of this interior. And we're gonna start right at the rear door panels. You can see you have this manual sunshade, hides nicely if you don't need to use it. 
Nothing else here really stands out. Now, I wish they kind of broke it up with the different colors on this door panel. That's hard plastic, that's hard plastic. You have some of the padded uh, armrest right here, a little bit of storage, then of course you have your window opening and then more storage here and a lot more storage at the bottom of the doors. Now, going inside here, now this is not leather, it is this Syntax material that Toyota's been using, so this is kind of a man-made leather. It is actually nice, it is perforated right in the middle, and it is solid on the sides. Now, let's move this seat forward here, so you have the third row seats, and as uh, you've seen me being here, it actually does have a little bit of room inside. Now, as far as the rest of this interior so you can see that you have the uh, climate control settings you have your heated seats you have your fan control and then at the bottom you have your regular household outlet as well as some usb type c ports now in the middle you have this console again more cup holders here and more storage space if you choose to have that so so you have the seven seating configuration in here two in the front two in the middle and three in the back it is quite comfortable to be honest with you oh and both seats have the seat back pockets for driver and passenger and before we get inside let's actually listen to the sound of the closing door all right that's pretty solid and let's see what we have in front so yeah this is what i was talking about if they did it in the back that would be a lot nicer to kind of break it up with the different color trim piece so in the front you have two memory seat settings you also have your window mirror locks control more storage at the bottom nicely padded armrest as well now both driver and passenger seats have power controls on this limited trim and you are welcomed by this grand highlander actually this is a lit up you can't see it uh, but that's right here of course on the door so they also have those pedal lights which you know you can see there's a toyota logo i don't know if you can see it on my hand right there so a pretty nice interior let me jump inside and i'll show you the rest of it so here we are on the interior of this 2024 toyota grand highlander and i gotta tell you it's very impressive the way it looks the way it feels the way everything is set up and let's start on the right hand side so you can see this trim piece we've seen on the door that kind of continues at the bottom portion here now this is not the real wood not even close but it kind of breaks up the colors really nicely what's interesting to see that you also have your usb type c charger for the passenger and the limited trim comes with the jbl stereo with the jbl speakers uh, this is wrapped in the softer material and this is a double tiered dashboard right here you have this 12.3 inch display right in the middle and that is standard across the line and on the limited and higher trims you'll get this digital dashboard as well uh, with the xle being still in the analog gauges we're going to take a look at it in another video so the steering wheel is nice to the touch and uh, it's nice size as well and i like the toyota didn't use any of this shiny plastic for the buttons now let's see what we have on the left hand side that seems like this what controls what's going on in the digital instrument cluster then you have the back button phone button volume button and voice control and the toyota logo really small in comparison to some of the other competitors where they're kind of in your face and on the right hand side this top portion right here controls your adaptive cruise control and the regular cruise control the bottom one controls your media so nice steering wheel let's take a look at what's going on in the instrument cluster so even though it is digital it is very nice easy to read you see some information right there on the right hand side you have the speedometer left hand side tachometer digital speed display right in the middle let's see if we can go up and down through here well that seems like it only goes uh, side to side so it has three different display options oh so what you can do is you customize it you press hold to customize it and let's see if i wanted to use blank driving support map settings and put it in either side you can do that like here we're going to put the drive info with the map right here you have the trip distance trip time etc um, and you can also hit ok to make it bigger now it comes with several different drive modes this is a front wheel drive version uh, so we have the normal drive modes we also have the sport drive mode which displays right here eco 
and snow. I'm gonna go back to normal. That just gives you the snow, a little red icon right there. Um, so this is how your screen looks like. This is your digital instrument cluster. Looks really good, although uh, I think it's lacking a little bit of customization that you'll find on some of the other brands. Now, this we've seen on some of the other Toyotas, and I like it. And this is my Android Auto, and it is wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay, which is really, really nice. It also has the wireless charging for my phone, so this is a perfect setting as far as I'm concerned. Let's go back to that Toyota screen right over here. So you see right now we don't have the subscription to the cloud-based navigation one thing to know about the cloud-based navigation system that it is cloud-based right so if you don't have a signal that navigation won't work so just be aware of that then going to your media settings you have select uh, enable audio to select source so let's say sources you have my phone radio and apple music amazon music and let's see if we can have there you go so we have the fm am Sirius xm as well my phone is connected right now for uh, calls and audio let's go to the vehicle settings so you climb up front rear and options and then go back trip information right now it's a 66 miles trip range we have uh, zero miles per hour average speed after start i've been sitting here in the idling so it's important to note that this vehicle has a, actually a pretty good gas mileage, 24 combined, and that means that it's 21 in the city and 28 on the expressway. And if it's anywhere close to it, that's actually very impressive for the size of the vehicle. Let's go back here and let's go to regular settings, Bluetooth devices, general settings. Okay, nothing too special about this. It's your display, screen, and camera. This is just your settings as far as brightness, contrast. Vehicle customize. Lights, illumination, door control, climate, utility. Brightness is all the way up. Now, I don't think it has like the full blown ambient lighting, but just maybe a little bit here and there. Door controls. Auto lock, auto unlock, climate. These are your settings, utility settings right here. Okay, let's go back to the general settings and let's see what else we have. So your apps, general, remote connect. Uh, remote authorization is required, so we don't have that. Uh, I'm not subscribed to Toyota, uh, but if you are a subscriber, I believe you can carry on settings from a vehicle to vehicle so scrolling down here this is your climate control i actually like it that they didn't include it on the screen but it's actual physical buttons and they're kind of wrapped in a rubber here so they're easy to use you have some good feel to it so you have heated and ventilated seats and uh, for driver and passenger in the front and the heated outboard seats in the back of course, you have the Trizon climate control, two in the front and one in the back. And these are all your shortcuts for the climate control, your hazard lights. Start and stop button is right here for your engine. Two blank buttons for something, USB Type-C, USB Type-C. This is your wireless charging. As you can see, I have the large phone and it fits in there, but barely. But it does the job, right? And then you have another storage place here. And if you like the feel of the regular shifter, well, that's what you have here. You don't have any of those new generation weird shifters, just a regular one. Put it in reverse and let's scroll up here. Let's see what we have as far as the rear view camera. Quality, nice and decent. As far as the functionality, you have the two different uh, angles. And again, for some reason, the camera only takes up a portion of the screen. So. There you go, I can wash that camera. Look at this. Check this out. I just wash the camera, so that's pretty cool. And I believe you can turn these on or off. Yep. If you don't like them as far as the projector line, but these are really helpful if you are uh, using it, especially getting into the parking spaces. So let's go back to the bottom of here. And this is just a pretty much regular setup. So you also have the electronic parking brake brake hold 
big cup holders this is where you change your modes we already went through that you can also turn off your traction control on this automatic start stop uh, button for the engine and this is quite large and very unusual the way it opens instead of opening up the whole thing this middle portion slides and you have tons of room look how deep it is i'm going to take this out see you can almost hear an echo 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 in there and then you have another outlet 12 volt power outlet right down below there so this is your storage inside very impressive up on top you have now this particular one doesn't have it but uh, the higher end trims have the digital mirror and then of course you have the warning that Toyota is spying on you so you have to call them to for them to stop doing that and then you have your light controls as well as the power moonroof controls now this controls just the shade so let's take a look at how much light gets inside of this vehicle once i open it up nice big panoramic sunroof this is almost 1400 option but if you like that type of stuff it definitely is nice and the roof opens up you have the nice windscreen over here as well and this is the interior of this 2024 toyota grand highlander now let's take it on the road and before we take it for a spin let's see what trim levels are available for 2024 grand highlander so it starts with the xle and the base model starts at forty three thousand and seventy dollars let limit that which i'm sitting at right now 47860 is got a starting msrp and then we have the platinum at 53545 now we get to the hybrid models the hybrid xle it's uh 44670 so it's about a thousand dollars more limited at 51060 and then we have the hybrid max limited and that's the one that i'm really excited about 54040 has got the starting msrp and 58125 for the hybrid max platinum which is the granddaddy the fully loaded one of all of the grand highlanders so how is it priced within the segment i think very competitively yes it starts at forty four thousand, but it starts with the xle which is already a fairly well loaded vehicle so it doesn't have the base trim all right let's see how this vehicle drives uh, before we do that let's see how tight it is as far as the turning diameter i don't have my uh, typical parking spaces but i'm going to tell you of how it feels so steering wheel all the way to the right it is actually good nice and tight turning radius i'm gonna do a bit of an off the line acceleration nothing too crazy in this parking lot now this uh, model, this powertrain, about 7.6 seconds, 7.5 seconds, zero to 60. Let's see how it does off the line. All right, so, you know, it's quite peppy. It's not a super fast vehicle, but that's not why you're buying a family SUV. Now, for those of you who think that it should have a better performance, you might want to check out this new Hybrid Max that's coming out. And that's going to be about 6.2 seconds, zero to 60, which is definitely respectable in the category. But overall, this vehicle feels very nice. I like how spacious it is you know i'm six feet tall i have plenty of room in here so for those of you bigger people you're definitely gonna be able to find yourself very nice and comfortable inside of this grand highlander i think it even has more room than the sequoia definitely as far as the cargo room it has more than the sequoia and it does have more third row room than the sequoia which you know that was kind of disappointing about the large suv from toyota it feels good of course it's not as powerful as that but hey i could definitely see myself uh, driving this vehicle cross country nice and comfy and the seats with the cooling function they're awesome let's we'll see how it accelerates in real life here stop and go bit of a wheel spin right there 50 all right 
right? We get it to 60 miles per hour. Let's not push it too far. Uh, but it is nice and peppy. You know, it's not super fast. But then again, like I mentioned before, this is not why you buy a family SUV. But I can definitely merge in traffic with no issues here. And also, it's important to mention that it does have this Toyota Sensing 3.0. So it's the newest generation of Toyota safety system, which is also very important while looking at the family SUV. It does have plenty of room, definitely. That's a big plus. It looks great. I think the design of it, I like it better than the regular Highlander. I'd probably go for a little bit different rims and maybe not this particular color combination, but definitely I think it's more polished than the Highlander. I think it looks smoother and more elegant than the Highlander. And definitely, I mean, if you look at the price difference, there's not a huge price difference between the Highlander and the Grand Highlander if you compare it feature by feature. So, I mean, it depends. I guess if you want the smaller, more aggressive, more sporty looking vehicle, then maybe Highlander is something that you should check out. But if you want more polished, more elegant and bigger vehicle, uh, this one definitely checks a lot of those boxes. Now, uh, like I mentioned Toyota Sequoia before, I was really waiting for that vehicle to come out and I was quite disappointed with the roominess, especially the roominess behind the third row seat and the roominess in the third row seat. And and that is much bigger vehicle and much more powerful. But then again, it definitely serves a different purpose too. It is more of a body on frame. You can tow more with it. By the way, towing capacity off of this one is 5,000 pounds, which is quite a bit for a four cylinder model. It is a great driving vehicle. Even when you wanna step down on it, you know, and accelerate, it doesn't make too much noise. You get a lot of torque at the lower end. So you don't have to rev it up to get that maximum power of this engine, which means that it doesn't, uh, it, it's not very noisy when you're driving it. And that's important too with the uh, family SUV. Now it also has got the very powerful air conditioning. Now I had this vehicle outside, it's 92 degrees outside with probably a million percent humidity. And I got inside, I got it started within a few minutes. I was really comfortable with this and I can feel or I can hear the rear air conditioning going in here so that's probably where you hear all this hum from but very nice and comfy as far as air conditioning and those cooled seats are definitely a lifesaver in the summertime they also have the heated seats for those of you who live in the colder climates overall very impressed with this vehicle if you're not a subscriber yet make sure you hit that little red subscribe button as well as that bell notification so you get notified when those videos are coming out guys thank you very much for watching i hope this was helpful and i'll see you in the next one cheers